Hello and welcome to the 83rd video of programming chess engine in C. This will be the first of two videos looking at implementing null move pruning into the search. Before I start going there, I've made a couple of changes to the evaluate because I made a real mess of the evaluation values last time and the way I put the code in. I've added in 30 hundredths of a pawn, so 0.3 of a pawn for a bishop pair. I've changed, and I'd rec I'm just going to go through this very quickly, I'd recommend you just paste in the code, but I've changed and reduced a lot, the, in the, particularly in the middle of the board, the scores for the p-square table for the king in the endgame, because Vice was walking its king into the middle of the board all the time, but that's not the only reason the scores in here, there are bigger problems. And this material draw function itself is fine, but what wasn't fine is, of course, I was calling material draw without checking whether there were pawns on the board or not. So I had the nice situation where Vice was five pawns down in the game, deliberately having caused it to achieve a draw. Obviously it wasn't a draw and it ended up losing. The next big error that was made was here. First of all, I was saying we're in the endgame if there are no queens on the board. Well, that isn't true. Obviously, if we have lots of other things on the board, then we need to keep the king safe still. And the way I was doing it was, say, from white's point of view, if black has less than endgame material. But I'd set the definition for endgame material much, much too high, because I'd set it for the material for both sides in total, not just one side. So I've reduced this material a lot here and removed the asking if queens are still on the board here. Because what Vice was essentially doing in every single game was sacrificing material to be able to run its king into the middle of the board and then claiming a draw if the enough pieces were off, which is just obviously not very good and it lost most of the games. And then the bishop pair bonus is applied here. So all in all, when I'd actually made these changes, which didn't take very long, it then managed to improve even more and won 13.5 to 16.5 compared with 12.5 to 7.5 last time. So all in all, just through improving the evaluation, a huge turnaround on the 13.7 loss that it had the first time it played just with p-square tables. So the evaluation looked all right, to be honest. And my experience says from now on, adding more and more features can often be detrimental unless you really test and tune them over thousands of games. So I'm going to leave them as they are. So this video, we're going to look at null move forward pruning. And on Bruce Moreland's site, I said in the first video of this entire series, I think I had a reference to his site, which I downloaded. And he gives a really good description of um, what null move forward pruning is. What it is essentially is, and he uses the analogy of boxing, where he says, if you give your opponent a free shot, so you drop your hand, and he can't knock you out, then the likelihood is that he's going to lose the fight. You're much stronger than he is. And this is essentially what null move forward pruning is. When we come into the search with alpha beta, we normally have a bounds of alpha and let's say we've got alpha of minus 100 and we've got beta of 100. Now what we'd normally do then is we generate our moves and search each move. But what we could do before doing this we could actually do a null move which essentially is to switch the side and give the opponent a free move and that's exactly what we do. So and the way we do it is we call it with what's called a null window. We do the search with a reduced depth, so depth minus 1 and minus r, so we'll use 3. So what we do is we go alpha beta with depth minus 4, and then we do minus beta as normal, so minus 100, and then minus beta plus 1, so that would be minus 99. So our opponent would search with bounds of minus 100 for alpha and minus 99 for beta. And now let's imagine that the opponent's best score he actually manages in this situation is minus 110, which means he hasn't managed to improve above, to improve alpha. And of course, if he does improve alpha, he's also going to be beat, uh, equal, better than equal to beta, because he has to have minus 99 to improve alpha. So if he gets 110, he hasn't improved alpha, alpha or beta. So when we come back into our search, let's say that we return alpha, so we return minus 100. Well, because we negate the score we've returned in the Negamax fashion, we end up returning 100. Well, this is greater than equal to our beta in our original function. So what we're saying is, our score is so good, even with a free move, 
the, uh, we can still be equal to or above beta, which means there's probably no point in generating and searching our moves because we can already guarantee that we're stronger than the strong enough to beat beta, even when we've given the opponent a free move. So we simply then just return beta. If the opponent did improve beta, so got say a score of minus 50, then the return value that we would get as val here would be a 50, and this is less than beta. So we would then generate all of our moves and carry on because there might be a move that's good for the opponent. So all it can be seen as simply is giving your opponent a free move and if you can still, even after the opponent has been given a free move, this if, if the score that the opponent gets beats beta, then you can pretty much be safe that your position is winning enough just to return beta as it is. The only positions where that can cause a problem however are in what's called Zwugzwang positions and he's got a really good example here and if it's white to move then white has to play king b2 and then we've got black playing king d2 and the pawn promotes however if white called a null move here then the position's a draw black either moves the king to c3 and it's a stalemate or black has to move away and the pawn is and the black pawn can be captured and it's a draw so you have to but obviously the score of the draw is wrong for white because he's uh, actually in a losing position because he's going to be forced to move. So the null move here gives completely the wrong result. And Zugzwang positions are something you need to watch out for when you're actually programming in the null move. So you need some kind of check in there before you actually do a null move. And the usual check there is to say if the side to move has got at least one big piece on the board, which means it can slide around or jump away, then you probably haven't got a Zugzwang position. It happens very rarely anyway. And the other thing is obviously for null move when you're coding it, you can't be in check, otherwise the king will be captured by the opponent, which is illegal. And there are a couple of other checks which we'll see when we actually come to coding in the null move, which we'll be implementing. So I've already hit around seven minutes in this video, so I'm going to stop there. And in the next video, we'll actually start implementing the code for the null move in the search, and you'll see the improvements that it makes in the search depth. The code download for this video, however, will contain the corrected evaluations. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome, as always, on YouTube.